According to the Mayo Clinic, nuclear imaging technology provides doctors with the ability to detect and image over 25 different medical conditions. Nuclear imaging performs a unique role in imaging bodily processes that cannot easily be done with other imaging techniques. As an engineering student at Texas A&M University, it is my responsibility to um, understand how my field of nuclear engineering increases the global quality of life and how nuclear engineers can work with other engineering disciplines to create a final product. So nuclear imaging gives doctors the ability to um, image organ function and other bodily processes in a non-invasive way. So first, I'm going to talk about why nuclear imaging is attractive for some patients. Then I'm going to talk about how nuclear imaging um, plays a role in combating cancer. And then I'm going to talk about some of the problems with um, availability um, in regard to nuclear imaging globally. So nuclear engineering is a non-invasive and painless process that makes it attractive for some patients. Um, it it's a process that requires no surgery. So according to the U.S. Cardiology Review, um, radioactive material is injected intravenously into the blood. And then PET and SPECT machines, um, the two types of nuclear imaging machines, can then see, look into the, they, they use their cameras to detect the radiation and create a 3D image of a bo the body or whatever is being imaged. This is because the radioactive material injected into the blood uh, gives off gamma radiation and um, th that gamma radiation is visible to the PET and SPECT machines. Nuclear, um, nuclear imaging is also a painless process. And the amount of radiation is so small when it's injected into you that it's impossible for it to lead to um, radiation sickness. And according to the RMC Health Center, um, the process can take um, up to two hours, but sometimes just 20 or 30 minutes. So it can be a quick process too. So because it's not invasive and painless, um, it's attractive for those with a weakened immune system. So nuclear engineering is important to um, de the detection and treatment of cancer, especially um, in those people with tumors in hard to reach areas. Um, the technology can detect the scope of cancer and the severity of cancer. And according to the Lancet, um, nuclear Im imaging can easily determine whether or not a cancer has metastasized or spread. And you can see right here, this cancer has metastasized. You can see two different tumors. So um, according to um, the Journal of Nuclear Medicine, um, when the radioactive material actually accumulates in these tumors, because cancerous tumors use more material from the bloodstream because they are just focused on constantly reproducing instead of performing their actual function. So they will suck up all the radioactive material injected into the blood and it will concentrate in these tumors. Um, and nuclear imaging um, can also be used to, um, to determine a patient's response to a cancer treatment. So according to the Lancet, you can compare a nuclear medical image to a baseline bone scan. Uh, and additionally, it provides information on organ function um, and how a cancer treatment has affected organ function in different parts of the body. So while important to cancer detection and treatment, um, there's not actually an equitable distribution of nuclear imaging technology around the globe. Access to nuclear imaging technology in low-income countries is startlingly low. In fact, access is even, it's, not even close to, oh, it's not even close to the access that high-income countries receive. According to SpringerLink, um, there is just 0.036 SPECT machines per million people on average in low-income countries compared to 17.9 um, SPECT machines uh, per million people in high-income countries on average. This is a stark difference. And this means that those in, people living in low-income countries have, don't have access to vital cancer treatments and AD treatments. There's also a lack of PET machines in these low-income countries. Um, according to Springer Leak, in high-income countries, there's 3.2 PET machines per million people on average. But in low-income countries, there's just 0.007 PET machines per million people on average. Um, this means that in high-income countries, there's actually 450 times the number of machines per person on average. Um, this is this means that there's 450 uh, low-income countries have 450 less times the access to nuclear imaging technology than high-income countries. So, if nuclear imaging technology wants to expand its market share, it has to grant better access to those in low-income countries. 
So in conclusion, nuclear imaging technology provides the doctors with the ability to image bodily processes and organ functions that would not otherwise that would otherwise be difficult with other imaging technologies. It does this in a non-invasive, safe, and painless way, and it also aids in the early detection and treatment of cancer. But access does need to be improved in low-income countries. Currently, it's a relatively small part of the imaging market, but as low-income countries begin to modernize their medical facilities, uh, nuclear imaging is presented with an opportunity to get some more market share. And here is Alex Mitchell to tell you a little bit more about nuclear imaging.